Hey guys, what's up and welcome back to the BFS Fishing Channel. And in this video, we're going to be tearing down the 2023 Daiwa SS Air TW. Okay, so just before we get started, there is a little bit of background or familiarization. So the SS Air TW is actually built on the frame of the Steez CTSV70. Now that reel does use a larger spool of 30 millimeters. And what I wanted to do was I wanted to take a look actually at the inductor springs because on this reel, what I was finding is that the inductor spring was very, very weak. Now I've actually gone ahead and already taken off the inductor and the spring and kind of broken that down. But here on the left, we've got the Steez CTSV70 spool, essentially. It's actually coming out of my uh, Millionaire CTSV70. And then on the right, we have the SS Air TW inductor and the spring. So we're gonna do a little bit of a comparison. And so you'll get to see the weight between the two and just see how much lighter the SS Air TW inductor is compared to the CTSV70. So we're, we'll go ahead and measure the um, we'll go ahead and measure the inductors first. And so the CTSV70 inductor comes in at 1.45 grams. So quite you know it's not light. And then and this one comes in at a 0 0.66 gram weight. So pretty big difference in weight between the two inductors. And we'll go ahead and put the scale away. But also what I wanted to compare is the strength of the springs, the inductor springs. And so if you'll notice, this is the CTSV70. And then this is the SS Air TW on the right. And so I'll try to zoom in on this uh, in uh, post, but you can see just how much weaker the SS Air TW inductor spring is and I think that kind of leads to uh, the inductor becoming activated again at kind of like the tail end of your cast I I can't really confirm that but you know it's something interesting to kind of share with you guys all right so the first thing that I want to do is I want to take a look at the handle knobs now according to the schematics and also a fellow youtuber Earl uh, who goes by the channel name of it must be bait the bearing sizes on this reel or the bushing sizes i should say where they're in the handle knobs and also on the worm shaft they are coming in at a size of four millimeters by seven millimeters by 2.5 millimeters but um, I, I do want to confirm that and i do want to check so we're just going to go ahead and break down one of the handle knobs and so if you can look there is a phillips in there so we'll go ahead and take that out and again, I am not a Daiwa expert. Uh, I don't have too many Daiwa reels. And the Daiwa reels that I do have are quite different from this. Okay, so there is the bearing and we'll go ahead and measure that as I get it off. Looks like it is shimmed right there. Maybe two of them. I will say that these uh, handle knobs are shimmed very well. There's like zero, zero play on that handle knob. But okay, let's get some measurements. So our outer bore or outer diameter is coming in at 6.99. So that's essentially a seven. Your inner diameter is going to be a three point, I'm getting 3.89, but that's essentially going to be a four. And then the width of the bearing, grease and nitrile gloves do not play nice, but it's coming in at 2.49 or a 2.5. So it indeed is a four by seven by 2.5 or a uh, seven four zero size. And I'll put the sizing information in the description down below. So I'm gonna put the screw there and I do see that it is a bushing that just pops out. And so I don't know if you guys can see that, but it is indeed a bushing and we can check sizes even though it'll 
most likely be the same. So seven by four by, really don't like picking this stuff up with gloves, but it's a 2.5. So it is a four by seven by 2.5. Okay, okay. So unfortunately I don't have the Daiwa specific tool that they use, which is basically a flat head with a little tiny, it's not even a hex, but it's a, I think it's like a little square in the, uh, the middle of the screw. So I'm just gonna use a flat head to uh, get this off and just be very careful with it so that I don't ruin the screw. Go ahead and put that aside. We'll go ahead and pop off the lock washer or locking plate. And I do see that there is a little bit of grease under there. We'll just wipe that up. And like, okay, we'll go ahead and take off the handle nut. All right. Quite a bit of oil, and there looks like a, a little blob of grease on the end. Go ahead and remove the handle, set that aside. And of course, everything is under spring tension. Wow, that's quite a beefy drag spring. Okay, so we've got a washer. And then our star drag, which is made of Zion or carbon. We've got a pretty beefy star drag spring. I've never seen one that beefy before. And then we'll go ahead and take off this nut that seats the spring, which is also quite well greased and comes with, it's coming off with two washers. Oh no, is it two? Nope, just one. So it is, it has a seat for the spring and that should go towards the handle. So that'll be there. And then we've got the clicking mechanism. I've got to say that the SSRTW has a really pleasant sounding uh, clicker. And then underneath there is another washer that's hiding. We'll go ahead and remove that. Uh, everything is so greasy. Okay. Uh, and there's one more thin washer on the handle that will cover the handle bearing. All right. I think at this point, I'm gonna go ahead and take off the spool. Oh. So it appears that there are two spring washers, which is pretty standard. They should be opposing each other. Mine, one of mine just got stuck to the reel because everything is so well greased up. And I think they're doing that because this is a, a salt ready reel. So it just helps to control corrosion. But okay, let's go ahead and remove the side plate again and the spool. I'll go ahead and set the spool aside. There is something kind of unusual about the side plate or kind of unique, I should say. So the side plate has a little tiny metal pin on it right here. And that pin has an O-ring. I don't know if you guys can see that at all, but I think this helps to kind of seat the side plate a little bit better, but also helps so that the side plate doesn't just fall off after you unlock it because that O-ring kind of creates a little bit of friction. So pretty unique, interesting uh, touch. Okay, so we've got three, I believe, hex screws, and they're going to be in the in the 2.5 millimeter size. And so we'll go ahead and take those off. So you're gonna have one in the inside near the front of the reel, one near the clutch button in the back of the reel, and then one is accessed through this hole that uh, kind of goes right along here. All right, so the first one, and we'll check to see if the sizes are different, but I kind of doubt it. And then the last one through the frame. Yep. And it looks like all three are the same size. So we'll just go ahead and put those there. 
All right, so now this engine cover should just come off or gear cover. Okay. All right, so we're in the reel and I'm just going to pull the handle bearing because it's probably gonna just fall out anyways. Set that aside. And yeah, there's quite a bit of grease on this. All right. So this is the first time I'm in this and it definitely does not look like it is carbon. Definitely looks like a metal of some sort and it's very light. So I'm gonna go ahead and guess that this is magnesium, but I just wanna get a weight on it just to show you guys that it is quite light. So this is coming in at 18.67 grams. So it's a very, very lightweight engine cover. And it doesn't look like there's anything, any screw affixing the um, anti-reverse. You got your spool tension or your zero adjuster. You know, I, I don't like that they call it a zero adjuster. It's just a spool tension and I use spool tension if it's needed. But anyways, I'm gonna go ahead and set the, uh, the side cover down or the engine cover down and we'll take a look at the guts of the reel. So the goal of this uh, teardown today is to basically check where all the bushings are, check on those sizes. And so we're trying to make our way down to the worm shaft basically. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this AR bearing sleeve off if it can. Interesting, there's a little bit of a pop there, which I usually don't feel on other reels. Okay, we're gonna go ahead and remove the main gear. And again, a little bit of, kind of resistance, almost like there's some threads that are kind of out of whack. So it looks like there's a drag washer on the bottom and then we can go ahead and see what kind of clicker mechanism they're using. But I think this is using, yeah, it's using a pawl with a spring right there. So if you see right there, I'll point to it. I don't know if you guys can see that, but the, uh, the pawl is right there. And that kind of rubs along the inside of this uh, track. So we'll go ahead and put the main gear assembly there. Actually, go ahead and look at the teeth. So this does have digi-gear. Mm, the teeth don't look so micro. I don't, unfortunately I don't have my Aldebaran main gear out to kind of compare to, but uh, yeah, very well machined. I mean, the reel is, is quite smooth, surprisingly, for a, a reel that's using bushings. All right, so let's go ahead and take out the anti-reverse sprocket. Anything underneath? Nope, nothing underneath that. Go ahead and set that down. Now we'll go ahead and remove the pinion and the pinion yoke and the springs. Okay. And just take a look at the uh, pinion itself, which looks very well machined and uh, kind of to be expected. All right, so we'll go ahead and set that down. Okay, so the next matter of business will be to go ahead and remove this uh, handle, handle shaft, or main gear shaft. And so we'll go ahead and use our Phillips. And so it looks like this main, uh, main gear shaft does have two windows, one right here and one right here. And as you rotate the uh, shaft around, they will open up to two Phillips screws, which are holding everything down in place. And so we'll go ahead and access those and remove them. Okay, and so we do have a bearing underneath. Yeah, the, uh, the main gear shaft is ported, which is nice to see. All right, so now we can go ahead and remove this front cover so that we can kind of get more access to the C-clips holding the main shaft in place. 
So I'm going to use a very, very tiny Phillips screwdriver. And this is a 000 size. And there's one Phillips screw holding this cover on here, but also another one on the opposite side. So we'll go ahead and remove those. You know, one thing that I'm noting is that the main gear isn't heavily over greased on my particular copy, which is kind of nice to see. They did go to liberties to, to grease some of the other components, but at least the main gear isn't heavily over greased, which is great. All right, so this is just, you know, a clip on, so you just pull on one side and then the other side should unclip itself. So we'll go ahead and put that there and we'll set the screws right next to it. All right, so we've got access to our worm shaft and the C-clips now. And so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and release, I kinda wanna take a look at the Paul. And so I've actually never seen a, um, a Paul cap like this before. I had to actually talk with somebody uh, Marcus, if you're out there, thank you for the tip. But yeah, so in order to remove this, this one has a open Paul design. And there's this O-ring that surrounds, I guess, the retention mechanism. So it's basically just a little pin right here that's holding everything in. So what you have to do is you have to get underneath this O-ring with um, usually a pick, but uh, I unfortunately don't have any of my picks on hand because we're all of our stuff is all packed away. And these forceps should be, should do the trick. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and remove that O-ring. Set that down and then see if I can't manipulate this pin to come out. And indeed, it does come out. And now the pole should just fall out. If it wants to. Yeah, okay, here we go. <laughs> So the Paul is, all right, so there's a little spacer on the bottom, um, but there is your Paul for this reel. And actually, it uh, appears to have an indent on the bottom, I'm assuming for weight savings. If you want weights on the Paul itself, I can go ahead and do that. Hopefully there's no glare in the, uh, the reading. And this Paul is coming in at 0 0.44 grams with a little bit of grease on it. So pretty lightweight. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and put the Paul down. Okay, so let's go ahead and get to the Eclipse. Yeah, so this is the uh, security bit that I've been using. And it, if you look at it, it's very similar in shape to this tool, but yeah, we'll see how this works. This works better in, in tight spaces for me for these reels. And so what I do is I will actually use the two prongs and push against the two arms of the E-clip to kind of push it aside. And then hopefully it'll just pop off and not fly anywhere. Bear with me though, this one has, this reel has this kind of raised um, lip around the E-clip, and so it's making it a little bit challenging. Normally you can just like push it straight off, but in this one, the E-clip is a little bit, doesn't wanna work with me. Now I know that there are other methods to removing these E-clips, but, oh, okay, I got some purchase on it. So once you get a little bit of, get it to kind of move off of the spool shaft a little bit, you'll see these two little openings alongside the shaft and you can stick, you know, whatever tool you've got that uh, is small enough to get in there and kind of pry it off of the spool shaft. Now, be very careful with that when you're doing this. And then also be very careful with it so that it doesn't fly away. All right, so I've gotten one E-clip off. And that should be enough to get the worm shaft off of here. So we'll go ahead and remove this washer. And put that 
down. All right, so just like that, it looks like the worm shaft is completely free. Go ahead and set that down and then see if we can't get this bushing to come out. There we are. All right, so as promised, we'll go ahead and size these. And just to make sure, I, I do want to see if they, just to save a little bit of time, they do look very similar in size. And yes, they do, are they the same size? They do appear to be the same size, yes. So for this side, you'll actually have to use um, an E-clip removal tool and then remove this E-clip to get the, uh, the gear off. Unfortunately, it doesn't seem like there's any other way to get this uh, bushing off. But yeah, let's get that size. All right, so 6.97 followed by an inner diameter of 3.89 followed by a width of 3.89. So it is indeed a four by seven by 2.5 bushing. This feels actually like a different kind of plastic, almost like a Delrin material, or is it a metal? Fortunately, I'm wearing gloves, so I can't really tell, but it does feel different. I don't know why they would use metal. I would think Delrin would be a better material, or maybe it's a different material altogether. But um, yeah, there you have it. That's where all your bushings are in the uh, Daiwa SS Air TW. The, uh, the frame feels extremely light. Yeah, magnesium, definitely magnesium. This is definitely not aluminum. I'm gonna go ahead and do my due diligence and kind of clean up some of this grease because I'm gonna be using this for freshwater use and I don't need all this extra grease in there. I think that's gonna do it for this video, guys. Potentially in the next video, I'll do some, or I'll try to get some comparisons. Um, I really want to know how this reel compares to the 2022 Shimano Aldebaran, because I feel like the Aldebaran is kind of the the gold standard of you know really ultra lightweight BFS uh, lure casting. But um, this one, it's uh, it's pretty unique. That's all I gotta say for now. But anyways, if you like the video, please consider giving it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, go ahead and leave a thumbs down. Uh, if you haven't subscribed to the channel and you found this informational, useful, educational, entertaining, then please consider going ahead and subscribing. And yeah, with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching, and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.